30 minutes a week. What would you do with just an extra 30 minutes a week? So it seems like whenever I log on to Facebook these days, I am spammed with notifications from podcasting groups. And without fail, I will see both the creators who edit their own shows and the professional podcast editors talking about their editing process. And I am over here like, dude, bro, beginners shouldn't do that. Like you're wasting a lot of time there. Or even like professional people like, oh, you know this tool, it actually does this too. Why don't you just like do it this way? And in case you're wondering, yes, I am the idiot who wants to save so much time that they actually spend more time than it would have saved them to actually find the time-saving techniques. If you didn't catch all that, that's cool. The good news for you is that I can share some of my obsessiveness to help you with your podcast editing workflow. Step one is actually totally a cop-out if I'm being completely honest, but if you wanna save time in your editing, do more upfront. I call this the research phase. I usually write things down on a piece of paper. That's literally for this YouTube video, but I do the same thing for podcasting. I will outline the entire podcast or video or blog post or whatever. I will think of a bunch of titles. I will also brainstorm some potential thumbnails. I get it, this is a cop out, but the more I can control going into this microphone, the less fixing and correcting and editing that I have to do in post-production. So I spend a little bit more time up front making sure my notes, my research, if I'm doing an interview, that sort of stuff is rock solid on Dropbox Paper is the app I use, and then I'm off to the races. And it's at this point where my podcast workflow completely splits because I do different things in solos versus interviews. For interviews, and I've talked about this in other YouTube videos, I use Riverside.fm currently. I've also used Zencaster and Squadcast and approve of them. I will export all the recordings in high quality wave format, download to my computer. And if I'm doing a solo show, I will generally go straight into Descript to record voiceover work. So if I'm doing an interview, I will generally import the two audio files for the interview right here into Descript, and I'll have them transcribed, of course. I have a tutorial series on YouTube on Descript. You can go check that out. All the links will be in the description below. Or if I'm doing a solo show, I will come right in here using my Heil PR40 Rode pod mic or any of the other mics that I obsess with and record right here and transcribe in real time. Now, another cop-out tip to save time in your editing process is to stay organized in your file and folder structure. Woohoo, exciting. So I'm on a Mac, I use QSpace instead of Finder so I can break out these nice little panels right here. I generally have shortcut ups set up for my podcast, shortcuts that is. I will also generally have my, called intros and cuts. I don't know why I named it that, but I will have my sonic branding, my sound effects that I use, my segues that I use over and over again. I will usually have these open in a separate panel for easy uh, drag and drop, if you will. And if I'm being honest, most of my assembling of clips now happens in Descript. So at the top of every episode, I have my sonic branding right here. I will generally come and drag that straight into Descript. I'll put it wherever it needs to go and I'll move things around. I will generally cut out ums and uhs right at this point here in Descript. You can see here is the file, if I can zoom in a little bit. It's a little clunky because I'm recording a YouTube video right now. And this is by far the longest part of my process. I'm removing filler words, silences, correcting things where need be, adding in segues, intro voiceover, outro voiceovers, music, all that happens to Descript for me personally, mostly so I can use their filler word detection, saves me a lot of time, and I can also auto-delete silences and stuff like that. It's pretty crazy how fast that is these days. But then the timeline splits again, like in Avengers Endgame. And this one mostly has to do with if my audio is like a B minus, or like an A plus. Like if my podcast guest had a really great sounding microphone, they were wearing headphones in the interview, or if I were doing solo voiceover work with my good microphone here, all's well and I do something different than if I have mediocre audio. Or if there was background noise or you know, different stuff like that, I'm not happy with its sounds. The timeline splits again. If the audio is A plus, everything sounds good, I don't think there needs to be a whole lot of background noise reduction or effects or anything like that. I will generally export right from Descript here, a mixed down audio file, just like a wave I usually choose file export audio, and I'll just like mix it down. And then I'll upload straight to Auphonic. 
Now, every now and then I'll come in here and play with the channel effects in Descript, of which there are only two, a compressor and an equalizer. I rarely ever do EQ these days, only because I'm happy with my sound for the most part, and I might mess with a little bit of guest EQ if I'm having a hard time understanding them, but I'll save that for just a second. If I don't need to do any of that stuff, or I have to add very slight compression, I might come in here and do a tiny bit of it, but most of the time, honestly, I don't even bother. Share export audio. I'll usually do lossless wave format, the entire composition. I will generally normalize right here. I don't do minus 16 at this step. I do minus 18 usually just to kind of get it up roughly to where it's going to go. And I'll hit export, save that file in my like working folder for whatever episode I'm doing. I don't save them to a random folder. I put everything together in one folder. Uh, just choose one of these for now. I'll save that and then I will go into Auphonic. I got videos on Auphonic on this YouTube channel as well. If you've never used it, super awesome. It doesn't sound perfect, but honestly, God, it's such a bang for your buck. You get a couple of free hours a month, yada, yada. I will generally grab that audio file from my working folder, whatever it is. I'll drag it up in here. I'll usually do MP3, of course, is my output. I don't know why I've always chosen 96 kbps, but I do. I always do a mono. I will do noise and hum reduction. Minus 16 luffs. This is where I've hit that final loudness target. Excuse me. Reduction amount auto. Start production. It will, of course, you know, produce the MP3, and I generally upload to Buzzsprout. But let's say my audio is not A plus and is actually more of a B minus, and more work needs to be done. So here we go. This is the fun part that has taken me 12 years of podcasting to finally put together a great workflow for effects, compression, limiters, or whatever. So I use Descript, like I mentioned already, into Logic Pro. Da -da -da -da. So I've assembled all my clips. I've removed ums and uhs and yada yada. I'll go to Share, Export, Timeline Export. So I'll do Pro Tools and or Logic, and this will create a project file this is generally how I have my settings right here. I'll export that into my folder. I'll go navigate there and open it with Logic Pro. So here's what I do. I will open that in Logic Pro. It doesn't look like this. This isn't one of them, but I will have the interview right here. And sometimes if I have outros and music and sound effects, those will be on different lines as well. I will always, 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 always copy all the files. Command A to select all. I would literally just copy and I will close this and don't save. And I will open up a new project file based on templates. I have had a template for every year I do my podcast. I make some updates here and there. At the moment, I'm still using the 2020 template, which will have four tracks. One's a music track, voiceovers, and then interviews, track one and track two. So I will come in here and then paste everything from that other project file that I exported from Descript. The reason I do that, because I already have my effects down here that are like good to go. I don't do any on the music track, but on the interviews, I will generally have Nectar. That's an Isotope plugin. I'll show you more about that in a second. Then I have the voiceover track. So I'll copy from that one. I will shut down the file. I will open up this new template and I will paste in those files. This generally takes about 30 seconds to paste depending on the length of the podcast or whatnot. But then I am off to the races, my friends, and good to go. So first things first, when it comes to plugins, I bought the Isotope Elements Suite or something, something, I don't remember what it's called, for like 49 bucks. They put it on sale like once or twice a year, it's generally like 100 or 150 bucks or something like that. And this includes the voice denoiser, which removes background noise really well. It's adaptive. And it includes Nectar and Neutron, which are two different plugins that are kind of like one-click solutions. Both of those have compression in there. Both of those have EQ in there. And you can kind of analyze the voice on the tracks in like one click. So here's what I mean. I have an interview file here. Here's me, here is my guest. I would generally come on here and sometimes if there's background noise, I will do the RX-7 voice denoise. I should probably update to RX-8 or whatever, but alas. So here's what that actually looks like. I have an audio track here that I pulled up. I can't show you RX-7 voice denoise because it's crashing my new Mac M1 mini right now and I'm not sure how to update it. But that does a pretty halfway decent job of removing the background noise. I will then either have Nectar or Neutron. I will come down here and select Isotope, Neutron. Let me just show you how this works because it's absolutely incredible. I will pick some sample audio here. I'll start playing and I'll hit the track assistant button. Keyboard. And I would love to share with you some tips you probably haven't heard before on how to 
It takes a couple of seconds. It analyzes the audio. I can put in some filters here if I want to, high pass filter. It has a compressor, which you can come in here and mess with the settings a little bit to your heart's desire. It has an exciter. I generally don't do that. I don't like the way that makes my voice sound. And I'm good to go. There's a little bit of EQ that it did automatically. There's a little bit of compression. And I will generally then do a little bit of loudness mixing. Sometimes I will actually export from Logic Pro here and then run it through Auphonic again. If there's a lot of files to work with, a lot of tracks, excuse me, if there's like four or five tracks, I actually have the Auphonic multi-track desktop app, as in I don't use the browser version. I will create a new folder in the downloads folder or something where I'll throw it away later for AUP for Auphonic. I export these tracks, all of them, right? I'll select all, I'll go to file, export, all tracks as audio files. I don't do normalization. I'll turn normalization off and I'll export it into one of these folders. And then I'll go back to the monthly track. I'll grab the folder, just drag and drop, make sure that my settings are good to go. Noise and hum reduction, high pass filter, foreground, background. You can do automatic ducking if you know how to use Auphonic. And then I'll just export. There's my adaptive leveler, cross gates, minus 16 lefts, and then I'll upload that to Buzzsprout. Now, sometimes when it's pretty good audio, like it's actually pretty well leveled, I generally won't use Auphonic. I will come back here and put a loudness meter on the master track, set minus 16 as my target lefts. I will generally use an adaptive limiter on a per track basis. For example, here's what I've done here. You can see I usually have nectar elements. I will have a limiter with a hard out of minus one and out ceiling. And I will pump up the gain as I listen here to try and get it really close to minus 16. Again, I don't make it perfect. It just has to be in the same ballpark. And of course I already have a little bit of compression. So that's compressing this on a per track basis, but I will come in here, loudness. I will add an adaptive limiter with an out ceiling, of course. Sometimes I'll even add two if it was a really soft input and I'll get it close as I can. Now, the last part I can't actually show you because I lost it. Again, I just updated to the Mac M1 mini and I can't find it, but I use Vocal Writer, which is another plugin. It's on my computer. I just gotta like set it up again and I just haven't done it because it's a little annoying. Vocal Writer plugin from waves.com, Vocal Writer plugin. It's fairly straightforward to use. If you wanna go look at this and see how it works, I recommend going to YouTube, 48 bucks for a lifetime license, I believe. And you'll put it on here on the master track as well. And then, you know, kind of make it hover around. It's kind of like a compressor, but for all of the tracks mixed together, Vocal Writer is what it's called. And that'll be roughly minus 16. It'll be there. The left range will just be, I don't know, three or four is generally what I'm aiming at. So tracks, compressor, a little bit of EQ if I want to via the Nectar or Neutron plugins. Both of those are from Isotope. I will then add a little bit of gain through an adaptive limiter until I'm roughly at minus 16. I'll use Vocal Writer. You can see where this is annoying, right? And just using Alphonic would save you so much time. 30 minutes a week. What is it worth to you to have an extra 30 minutes a week? Or if you edit multiple podcast episodes, an hour a week, two hours a week. For me personally, I have over a million downloads from my current podcast. I've edited a podcast for clients. I've helped a couple of thousand people start their own podcasts now. I got to tell you, I'm a big fan of just using Alphonic. Fixmylevels.com is one that I used to use, although I bought the lifetime license of the desktop Alphonic, which I showed you a second ago. I usually assemble all my clips in Descript, and if the audio is even somewhat decent, I don't have to do background noise specifically. I will generally just mix that down into a WAV file and then go straight to Alphonic in the browser. Or sometimes I'll pull it in to Logic Pro and maybe have to move around a few more clips if I didn't do a great job of that in Descript, or add some background noise reduction via the Isotope plugin, RX-7 voice noise. I generally add a little bit of gain just to get it close to minus 16, somewhere in the ballpark. And then I'll export all files. I will run those through the desktop version of Alphonic and then I'm into Buzzsprout. All right, it's not editing, but I got two more really quick things. Featured images or your cover art for each individual episodes or whatever, please create templates. I use Canva Pro, but you can use Canva free version as well to kind of make one document and then whenever I come in here for a new guest, I will generally just duplicate, right? So Seth Gunn, I'll just duplicate you. And I'll of course remove your image. I'll drag somebody else's image in there. I'll put down their name or whatever. I'll bring this back up and I can modify it to other brand colors if I want to. And then boom, I'm off to the races. There is my featured image. So create templates 
for everything, first of all, but especially for graphics and images or whatnot. Now, shortcuts for my podcast description and or show notes. You can see I have some free resources to get people back to my website, to get people to socials. I will also point people to my free and paid tools. I do this on every single episode. I'll do my intro right here and then, oh, and leave a voicemail. I love people to give me voicemails for the podcast. I do this with one click. There's no copying and pasting. Let me open up uh, drafts and I'll just show you really quick. Dot PCX, dot PCX. There it is. <laughs> I just, that's it. I do that for every YouTube description as well, by the way, below this video. I didn't type all this out. I didn't copy and paste from somewhere. I set up a keyboard shortcut. So you can use keyboard maestro on a Mac. That's actually what I use right here. You can do lots of custom macros and text expansion and yada yada. Of course you can use text expander that's paid. I think it's like 30, 40 bucks a year or something like that. You can also use a text text expander and a text is a much cheaper version. Uh, you can also, there's several different tools, Mac and Windows for text expansion, but use that stuff, man. It's there for a reason. All right. If you are an editor, intermediate to advanced user, I want you to go check out my Descript series or even a beginner. Really? If you've never used a script, your mind's about to be absolutely blown by what's possible and how much time it can save you. And it's actually not that hard to learn. I really do believe that. And if you have used Descript, I'm gonna show you a few more tips and tricks you might not have thought of. So click over to watch that video. There's actually a whole playlist there. And uh, I love you guys. Thank you for watching. Do you and blog YouTube tribe and I'll see you next time. Adios.